Hi, it's Jill and I'm back. Part three, part three of our FFF file folder folio. So um, I think the last we left off, we had, I had three of these and had inked and stamped. So I finished that. I did each one a little different. This one's in green. And I used the same stamp as this one, only I did this with the walnut stain or photo. Yes, yes, it was a vintage photo. And same with this one, only this was a stencil. So I'll put that one aside because this is the one that I ended up picking out my papers for. So I'm going to show you with this one what we're going to do with this one. So this one, um, I'm going to do a cover, so I don't need a paper for that. I, did, I do have an extra one in case I change my mind, but I, I have something planned for the cover. So you'll notice I have a number in pencil. And that is because once I decide what sheets of paper I want on which on, on which paper, I, I don't want to mix them all up because you can just keep playing round robin of where you want each paper. So when I decide, I put the number on the back of the paper and the number, the same number on, on the file folder, and then I don't lose which ones I picked for what. I also, if you can see, I sewed. Now I don't, my sewing machine does not zigzag. It's a really old, old singer and it only goes forward and backwards. So um, I sewed around each of these and I did not glue them down and I'll tell you why. Because I plan to do a lot of um, envelope flips and flaps, and um, I may not use this particular one, but I just wanted to show you if I glue that down, actually, let me go this way. If I glue that down, then my flap would be showing, and I may prefer to have it under as a flip where then the flap is hidden. And I don't even know exactly what page I'd put this on. The same for this. I, I made this envelope out of a 12 by 12. And I cut it down to, I believe, 8 inches. Maybe, give or take. Oh, it was actually, it's actually closer to 9.5 by, by 11. And then I just, I scored the top at two inches. I scored the bottom at a half inch all the way across. And I scored each of these. I wanted this to be five and a half. It ended up only being five. So somewhere along the way, I worked magic with my numbers and came out wrong. So um, it's five inches and then whatever was on either side I just scored there so it was one uh, big score to get this measurement what I wanted then I just folded them in it will go this way I don't want to glue that shut until I get my my fasteners in so and I'm not even sure if I'm going to use this and if so how I did have a there it is um, I was thinking of perhaps gluing this onto one of the sides onto the back, like, like this, and then this would be my flap open to, if I wanted to, to glue under one of the pages if I wanted. So that this could flap. 
but I'm not I'm not sure yet. I was just goofing around and and made that. So I'm sitting that aside as well. And with this one, it's it was a uh, an envelope with a window. So it's just it's it's kind of bigger than I wanted. It's really so I I don't know I don't know if I'll be using that. And then uh, these one of these are for the back. I'm not too sure yet. So they put seven on both of them. That. that is what now I'm going to do with this one. I've already I picked my paper. I want a different feel for each one. This one's going to be more the French paper and haberdashery French paper. This one, I'm not sure. I think it will end up being the... It's called the Dapper Paper by Tim Holtz, the Dapper Paper. And then my third one, I haven't even picked the paper yet. Here's the, here's the French paper that, that I picked all these from. So this was just from Hobby Lobby. And it, it's only the, the paper, it's not, it's not cardstock. Um, what I did do is, on this sheet, I really want this piece. I want to save this for the project inside it. But this is this, the piece I want. And since I'm going to cut it here, I wanted to make sure that I only got this and didn't ruin that. So I flipped it back upside down. So I'm hoping that that turns out the way I, I want it to. And I have them clipped. I'm gonna get and then these will be the papers that I glue down and then I will probably these are card stocks I'm probably going to pick mostly paper out of here to make um, envelopes and and a lot of the flips and folds and pockets and stuff but I just wanted to show you the, the two papers that I'm using for the folio that we're doing today so you can measure how big your okay so mine comes to basically six and a half but I want it mm, an eighth at least about an eighth shorter so that would be six and one two three Eight. Am I doing that right? Let me write that down. It's six and one, two, three, eight. Okay, I'm going to write that down, so let's hope that that's right. Six and three eighths. And long, or high, I should say. I want seven and one, two, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and six, eight. Okay, seven and six, eight. All right. And before I go any further, I just wanted to show you my. My ruler has teeth on one side because I ripped the part of uh, an aluminum foil box that when you buy your aluminum foil and then you tear it, that's just the teeth from the aluminum foil. And this is the box that it was connected to. And I glued it on my back of my ruler. I glued it on the uh, centimeter side because I don't measure with the centimeter side so now when I rip paper with that side it is like a stamp it makes like a stamp rip so the other side my inch side I keep fine so works great give that a try All right, I'm gonna bring down my paper cutter so 
hope it's not too noisy. Move that. And okay, so up and down. We want. Well, first I'll do the sideways one. All right. So I'll put that here. And it's six and three eighths. So I don't know if I can. I might have to make a mark with the pencil here because I just don't know if I can. If I know how to measure three eighths on this because because it's right on the thing. I'm probably just better off not taking a chance of messing it up because I'm cutting all the ones at the same time and I really don't want to mess up all the pieces of paper at the same time. So, alright, so so wide it's six and, and three eighths. So, we have Six and one, two, three, so it's right here. All right, let's cut that one first. And I'll tell you that this, this cutter has the wire. So as long as I put the wire on it, I'm good to go. And I love that. All right. I guess it should have been measured twice, cut once. Just gonna bring this over here and because I want a little a tiny bit peeking out all the way around. So all right. And then the bottom that long, that long is seven and six eighths. Alright, so seven. Seven and six eighths. Let me see if I can make room. Whoop, let me see if I can make room to measure this. Sorry if I'm quiet, but math and and talking at the same time does not work well for me. Seven and six, eight. Seven and one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. go got all of them cut now as you've seen with the first ones let's let's see if this worked out oh, it did okay um i think i might have an extra one just in case i uh, change my mind about something but oh here it is so then I ink around all the edges, and then I sew. I guess you could sew and then ink. Possibly it doesn't really matter, but I can't bring my sewing machine over here. Uh, so instead, we're going to ink. So once again, I hope you don't mind inking. If... So if you have any any more inking to do, you know you might have did um, some yesterday, but if you have any more inking, you can do it now. But I won't bore you with doing all, all of it. I just wanted to get it started because truly you can do that without even paying attention. Instead, what I may just what I think I'd like to do is try and make 
another one of those envelopes and I may not even make it the same size I may just oh, I picked the wrong tablet um so let's put my paper that I just cut off aside and let's pick uh, one of the pieces to make an envelope now this is one-sided paper yes it's one-sided um i can kind of look at the at the front i i was thinking about this this is the front cover then when you open it this is a pretty close seam but in the center that's where we have the half inch spine so I would think putting a uh, large thick envelope like this with with a flappy thing would do much better in on um, one of these two pages because of all the room that you really have if you look straight down on it so um instead of putting a big bulky something here I, i'm gonna put it in the center hope that works out hope i like that but that's what i'm doing so i just need a paper to make to pick to make my envelope i'm a little picky because this always reminds me of Christmas, and I don't know why. I like it, but it reminds me of Christmas. And I'm not too... I think what I'll do is... Hmm, sometimes I am not the greatest person to make these type of decisions. Um... Maybe I should make one out of this since, since this is, sorry if I bumped it, bumped anyone, um, since they make the bags out of this, maybe I'll make my folder out of this. I guess I have to hold it that way. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Made my decision. <clears throat> All right. And I'm going to change the size a tiny bit. I'm going to try it. I'm going to shoot for the for the five and a half in the center. So then this was eleven. Oh no, no, it wasn't. I after I did not cut anything off the side. I did after I made the envelope. That's actually when I trimmed it. Because when I folded it, this side, which I, I believe it was, I cut both sides, but this side came, they way over crossed each other. <clears throat> way more than they, than they even do now. So that's when I trimmed it. Otherwise, I left it. Okay. All right, good to know. I think if I'm going to be writing on it, I'm going to write on the back. So I would like to find this is where it gets hard uh, to, to use my mat to do any measuring because as you see as you see I had a nail polish remover incident and it ruined my mat so All right, so I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that should leave me one, two, three, four, five, six. So that should leave me six. So if I come in a um, one, two, three and a quarter, one, two, three and a quarter, which I can't see my dots, so I might as well use my roller. So. One, two, three, and a quarter. And then 
and one, two, three, and one more, one, two, three, and four. All right. So. That is, that's where I'm gonna. Open. I like to use that one. Okay, so. Let's see, this is a little hard for me to see here. Okay. We're gonna go with M. Okay, how can I make that look so hard? Alright, and over here. Alright, now over here we're going to go two inches. So one, two. Make sure where I need to be here. Two, that gives me my two inch flap, and then down here, I'm just going to do a quarter. Hmm. Hmm. No, maybe, maybe more than that because I only want to be how long? Seven. How long is the one I made? The one I made is seven, almost seven and a half. So, so here's the top. If I go from here, here is seven and a half. So I'm just gonna move it up here. And I'm gonna, gonna mark it at seven and a half. Then I'm gonna cut it off to where I only have about a half inch fold up. That's all I'm, you can have as much of a fold up as you want, but. I only want about a half inch. Okay. Alright, let's bring the trimmer back in. And there may be a completely easy way to do this, and I may be making this way harder than it, it actually is. Uh, if that's the case, don't do as I do, or do as I say, do as someone else's does. I don't. That's... That's my advice to you. Alright. Now, we probably will still have to trim the sides a little, but I'm not, I'm not worried about that, because right now, I will have to take out this little square along along there and that along there and do the same thing up here take out the ends or corners whatever. so i cut right on the score line i'm terrible at this but but if i go off offline i i fix it um, and for this one on this side once I get to the score line, I just come in and, and tilt it a little bit. And I do the same thing in here. Um, it's a little hard to see, and I'm sorry if the paper is causing a huge glare. I didn't think about that when I picked it. So, sorry about that. And now we will turn and nip it. Okay, those are my cutoffs. 
And then I have the same thing up here. You can bend it to where it's supposed to be bent if that helps you cut. I'm not entirely sure that helps me cut at all. What I did want to do is, because I want these to come in a tiny bit, is, let's again find a place I can actually measure. I want to line that up, and I just want these to come in a little. So I'm just going to go at a quarter inch, and the same with this line this up the line I'm just gonna go to the quarter inch then take my ruler and I'm gonna make a line from the point here to the quarter inch boom and that's where I'm gonna cut that and the same goes here I'm gonna make that to there and there. Boom. Okay. So now, to cut on that line. Boom. And same here. I'm going to just go down here. straight. Well, that really was, that was bad. But I won't tell if you don't tell. Okay. Fold on the, on the line. Maybe I'll fold that. Policy folder. That's the name of this. Policy folder. Okay. Now, I did um, on the first one, I did what I did here. I did kind of here so that it could just so these meet better and. Um, and then I just took my scissors and rounded the corner there. But when I, when I did these, I kind of lined it up. I didn't even go. I went literally between the quarter. Um, probably 50-50 between there and the same on the other side. And then I just cut, cut from that corner to my line. I'm going to make a line now so that I have something to follow. Okay. Nip those off. I mean, honestly, this these are really easy. If you just um, know what you know about what size you want, literally, you just figure that size here. If you know what size envelope, this is your envelope. With that, so see now that fits together nicer. So, as long as you know what size you want your envelope, take any piece of paper and make two inches for your flap, and then that starts your envelope, however long you want your envelope, and then a half inch for the fold up or whatever measurement you want for your fold up, and that gives you policy envelope then you can't glue anything together unless you know how you're going to close it unless you don't 
you know, if you want uh, one of the big circles or eyelets or whatever. So you need to, to know that. Now, you can work it so that your seam runs right up the middle. This one's pretty close, and I could trim it so that it looks like it runs right up the middle. However, if I'm putting the um, eyelet with a round, you know, when you cut a round circle out and you put it on, I don't want my seam to run down the center and then my eyelet is on the half on, half off. I'd rather have it over flap and then have my eyelet. You know, let's just say right here. So I want my eyelet there and I put my eyelet right here. That means the round circle would go right about there. But if I cut this piece, then then my eyelet would be too close to the edge. I don't really like that. I just, I'd rather have my, you know, I did trim this one. Trim this one. This one's a little closer to the center. Not that side, but that side. But I ended up, so it goes this way. I ended up um, messing up and I had to, when I did that, I, then I couldn't put my eyelet. So then I had to not cut this side and put my eyelet on this side. I don't find that a big deal. However, if that bothers some people, I know there's a lot of videos that probably will show you how to get your seam in the middle and, and that it all works out fine. But for me, I don't mind that. And I don't mind it at all. Just want to make sure that I'm not rubbing anything here. So, there it is. So, all we have to do is ink it, cut your papers, ink them, and we'll be ready for part four. So, it's kind of coming along fairly quick in a slow sort of way. So, <laughs> Well, I uh, hope you found it at least a little interesting, and you come back for part four, I hope. So I'll see you in a, in a little bit.